Hello everyone and welcome back once again to the channel. In today's tutorial we will be taking a look at how to use VATSPY when flying online on the VATSIM network. If you haven't ever heard of VATSPY, it is a free to download application that allows you to monitor the virtual airspace in which VATSIM operates. In other words, with this program you can see which controllers are online and also all the users that are currently doing a flight on the network. It's a very handy tool to help you plan your flights and to relieve some of your workload during an online flight. So let's take a look at how you can use it. We are starting on the default map screen. When you first load up VATSPY, this screen will be full of information already. But for the sake of this tutorial, we are going to add every layer separately so I can explain what everything means. At the bottom you can see a couple of things already. To the left is the time the screen was last updated. To the right of that you have a summary of how many controllers and pilots are online. An ATIS is a broadcast of a weather report at an airport so usually this can be used as a way to see how many airports have some kind of controller online since an uncontrolled airport won't have this broadcast. At the top of the screen you have all the options to select what information you want to see on the map. The first option lets you display all the aircraft that are currently in the air represented by a square with a line coming out of it, indicating in which direction the aircraft is traveling. You can add the call signs by selecting the next option. The option after that highlights the aircrafts including in your filter that you are using. I haven't quite figured this part out yet, so that's pretty much all I can say about it when it comes to the filters option. The next option is one of the more interesting ones and allows you to display which airspaces are controlled by someone. This can be a good tool when you are planning to do a flight and you want to know which areas have ATC. Do keep in mind that there is no info about how long the controller will stay online. It might very well happen that you do a flight to a specific airport because you expect ATC, but when you arrive the controller logs off before you can get in touch with him. This can be quite frustrating but not much you can do about it sadly. I would recommend just trying to fly wherever you want and if there's ATC online then that's great but if there's not so be it. Up next we have an option to display the boundaries of all the airspaces including uncontrolled ones. Then you have the option to display the code of the airspaces or not. Up next is another very handy option, this button displays which airports have controllers online. The previous option only displayed the controllers managing the airspace above airports. But what this option does is display the controllers for specific airports, so that includes ground, tower, delivery and so on. The A stands for ATIS and is the weather broadcast that we mentioned earlier. Next up this button lets you display the airports that don't have a controller online but do have some pilots who are flying to or from that airport, so you know where there's activity. To the right of that you can use this to display the exact opposite, so all the airports with no activity at all. If you selected the next option to see all the active airports and you want to know how much activity there is exactly, you can use the next option which displays the amount of aircraft on the ground. The green triangle represents the aircraft that are planning to depart and the red triangle displays how many pilots just landed and are currently at their gate or either taxiing. This again can be very convenient when you are planning a flight and you want to have as much company as possible. These two arrows allow you to switch between views. So the way the map works is you use your right mouse button to move around and you use your left mouse button to select an area on which you want to zoom in. Very nice and all, but what tends to happen is when you are used to using your left mouse to move around in other applications, it can happen quite often that you accidentally zoom in. And instead of having to scroll for who knows how long, you can just select the left arrow to go back to your original view to save you some trouble. If you want a good view of the entire planet, then you can push this button and this will automatically zoom out for you, again to save you some time. The next option allows you to fetch a meta report from any airport, whether it be online or offline. You simply type in the IKO code and then the weather report will appear for you to read through. If you want a more comprehensive report, you can listen to the 80s report in the sim itself, but keep in mind, as mentioned earlier, that this is only available for controlled airports. This drop down menu here is meant for setting your own bookmarks, which are basically specific views. Say for example that you mostly fly to Europe and you want a good view of all of the European countries on your screen. 
Instead of setting up the view every time yourself, you can make a bookmark called Europe and then you, whenever you pan the view around and want to go back to your view of Europe, you can select the bookmark and voila. This here is a general search function which allows you to look up any airport. In the settings tab, you can adjust some things to make the application look the way you want it to. This comes down to personal preference of course, so by all means test it out by yourself. What might be a nice option though is the one here which allows you to swap your mouse buttons. So this eliminates the common mistake of zooming in when you wanted to pan the view around, like I mentioned just a uh, minute before. If you want to refresh the map without having to wait for the app to do it by itself, you can press this button and the map will be up to date. That covers pretty much the most essential tab which uh, most of you will use 90% of the time. You do have some other tabs as well. The controllers tab gives you an overview of all the controllers who are currently online on the network and how long they have been online for. You can use this to your advantage as generally if someone has been online for 3 or more hours and you are planning to fly to their airspace from an airport which is an additional 2 hours away, chances are that he's going to be offline by the time you get there. The next tab shows you all the pilots who are currently conducting their flights on the network. The next tab is specific for the United States and again shows you the controllers and flights that are online for that area. The next two tabs are also specific to a certain area or airspace. No idea if you can change these but they are there nonetheless. Next is a filter tab which shows you all the filtered flights or airports or whatever. And lastly you have a list of the different servers and how you, many people are online on them. If you press the server name actually you can get a test to see what the ping is for that server in your location. If it's all green then that means it's probably the best server for you. For me it's the UK server which makes sense since I live in Belgium which is a neighbor to the UK. So that covers pretty much all the functions of VATSPY and how you can use them. I hope you found this somewhat helpful. If you did be sure to give the video a like and share it with other flight sim enthusiasts as well. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we are getting so very close to 1000 subs. If you want to see more of my content here are some of my other videos that might interest you. For now, happy flying to all of you and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.